Hi, this is Ian, and this is going to be uh, 30 random. This is a this is a, a video that I made inspired uh, from another video called 30 Random Things About Living in Thailand. And um, when I saw that video, I was uh, a lot of the, the different things, topics, and stuff that she mentioned inspired me, uh, reminded me of things that I experienced living in. Korea, China, um, and Taiwan, as well as I've traveled to Thailand and uh, spent time in Japan as well. So um, this is what this uh, video is going to be about, about me comparing sort of my experience, the same topics that she mentions, and then like kind of adding my own experience um, with those things, in, uh, mostly in Eastern Asia and a little bit of my experience in Thailand. So number one, uh, she says to get a mosquito zapper. So in Thailand there's a lot of mosquitoes and this is uh, the same with Taiwan. So if you're living in Taiwan, basically a mosquito zapper is like a, looks like a tennis racket and then you can swat the mosquitoes and it's going to kill the mosquitoes and they're pretty cool and um, it really stinks nighttime. I remember in Taiwan in my room you get a mosquito in there buzzing and pull the sheets over your head and you know I could spend the, the whole the whole night trying to run around your room swat it so get a mosquito zapper and then there's mosquitoes of course in China and uh, Korea as well uh, I don't there wasn't so many I remember in Busan there were mosquitoes but not so many I think when you start to get out I lived in Busan for two and a half years but as soon as you start to get out of the cities or I don't know in Busan anyway there's more more mosquitoes when you get out, I think, of the city. Um, maybe it's the pollution. I'm not sure. Yeah, Korea's not that polluted, I, don't, I didn't think, compared to some other places. But anyways, uh, I also lived in Changwon. And Changwon was like, uh, uh, there were mosquitoes. And the weird thing about Korea is they have these trucks or scooters sometimes. And they'll, like in the summertime, and they'll drive them down the street, and there'll just be this fog, and this machine spits out this fog, and it's full of, it smells awful, um, some kind of uh, insecticide, although in Korea I heard it was DDT, and uh, and um, then I read online, it's just some sort of insecticide, I think DDT maybe was used as an insecticide, but it smells awful, and it looks like this big white fog cloud coming out of this, uh, behind a truck, and they drive it through the neighborhood, and uh, it was awful. I always close my windows, it smelled really bad. Shaking hands, she says in Thailand people don't shake hands. Um, I think that's probably most, uh, you know, it's a cultural thing, um, I'm sure it's not always like that instead uh, that they why like uh, like bow like that a prayer position bow like that however I don't think all the people are going to do this like you know I'm going to compare it to my experience I don't really remember that I remember seeing flyers about Thailand tourist stuff about Thailand people greeting you like that I think some people will greet you like that in some situations but not in all situations. It's a shrinking world, and uh, I think there's probably some people that would shake your hand, uh, just depending on how exposed they are to, you know, what's uh, going on in the West and stuff. Anyways, compared to my experience, um, this is not a common greeting in Japan, Korea, Taiwan, or China. Bowing's not that common. You will see this sometimes in uh, temples, like people go and, uh, to temples like Buddhist temples or Taoist temples and um, maybe they're worshipping their ancestors and uh, you might see that. More common is the bow where they bend from the waist here, they bend down like this. <laughs> Something like that. That's bowing uh, in Thailand.
Thailand compared to Eastern Asia. Uh, drinking water. She recommends to not drink the water in Thailand, the tap water. And um, that's probably true. I never drink the trap water. I almost said crap water, but the tap water when I was there neither. Nor did I drink the tap water in China, Korea, Taiwan, Taiwan. And basically in all those places, if I remember correctly, you could boil the water. I don't know if that's true with uh, Thailand or not, but in China, at least the water, like, I remember staying in, in the hostel and the water I would sometimes drink, it didn't taste very good, most of the time I did buy bottled water, but they had it, they boiled it, basically, and um, you could drink that, but, um, yeah. And in Taiwan, I always bought bottled water and buy big, big jugs. And in Korea, I always bought bottled water too. Japan, I think Japan's got a, it's the uh, water is cleaner there. It's more developed. I think they have a better uh, plumbing system. And even like they say after like the nuclear react reaction or whatever in Fukushima, I think it is. Uh, even they say like. Uh, can look up on npr.org um, that the water there is actually safe. Maybe they have higher levels of some things in the water, but still considered safe to drink. Same with Tokyo. So I think uh, in Japan you can drink the tap water fairly regularly if you want, or you can buy bottled water. In the other places, um, Korea, you can boil it. China, if you're in a big city, I just buy bottled water. Um, anyways, in my experience, I always bought bottled water. The only place I remember drinking tap water was in Japan. That's it. Uh, toilet paper. She says that people in uh, Thailand don't use toilet paper. I think not most of the time, but sometimes they do, depending on you know the kind of restroom it is, or whatever. So this is interesting about Thailand. It's common, what I remember, the toilets, there are many toilets. Instead of toilet paper, they had a little nozzle with a spray, kind of like um, some sinks have in the West. Like, you have, um, after you wash the dishes, you can rinse them with the spray nozzle, and it's got a hose, you pull it up for the sink, and shh. Well, they've got one kind of like those next to the toilet, and that's for cleaning your bottom with, okay? Yeah, it's actually, you know, if you can be a little different at first, but um, yeah, it's more efficient and it's more hygienic than toilet paper is, actually. And, um, yeah, so toilet paper is not common. Also, some toilets there don't flush. I remember um, some toilets that have a bucket of water next to the toilet, so to flush the toilet, you dump the water into the toilet. But, you know, that depends. Like, there's, there's different kinds of toilets, and some are more like you know, more like uh, just less modern than some than others, basically. And then toilets in uh, toilets in Japan. I see. Um, pretty normal. I remember in Taiwan, a lot of times you're not supposed to throw the toilet paper into the toilet to flush it. But um, toilets there are pretty much the same style. Like they do use toilet paper most of the time, and um, there are squat toilets, and uh, squat toilets, these are common, like, everywhere. A lot of places I've been in the world, like in Europe, they have them too, basically it's like a, there's no seat, nothing to sit on, and you squat down, and it's basically like a hole in the ground, and um, made from ceramic or something like that, of course, some metal, and, um, it's actually cleaner than it's they say better for your body to to, to do you do in that position so to speak um, yeah and then in Japan they have some high-tech toilets that also instead of like having a nozzle by it the nozzles in the toilet and it's all electronical and it can um, it can uh, like a, a day kind of like that 
Um, some of them even have you can heated seats, and um, so sometimes it's toilet paper too. But uh, it's up to you. You can use the toilet paper, or you can use the bidet to wash your bottom. It's up to you. That says something about that there wasn't really napkins in restaurants, and there wasn't um, play settings. Which, uh, in my experience, this is pretty common also in Eastern Asia. Like, you're not mostly, you go to a restaurant in the West, I think often there'll be a place setting. Like, you'll have your, your napkin, your forks, and your knives, and a glass, and um, a plate perhaps, or maybe they'll bring that to you, but uh, maybe even a coffee cup or something. It still depends on the restaurant a little bit here, too, but. Um, there, that's pretty rare, unless it's like a westernized restaurant, like catering to that sort of clientele, or maybe some like, you know, Hilton Hotel or something like that over there. Um, they might do that, but that's not common. Usually, it's like you walk into a restaurant and um, there's really nothing on the table. There might be napkins on the table, like just like a plastic bag filled with napkins or tissues like and, and maybe some condiments depending on where you are like soy sauce or chili or something like that and um, and then either they're going to bring you a cup or they're going to have cups on the side and you can go fill it with water or they're either going to bring that to you and then the same with your plate and then the same with uh, your silverware so if you have uh, silverware um, or you can get the silverware sometimes the silverware is on the side like Korea you know you go and you get you know what you want you need a spoon you go get it or chopsticks you go get it so sometimes you get it or sometimes they'll bring it to you but it's not usually on the table although sometimes they could have a cup full of chopsticks on the table it just depends but usually there's no place setting like formal like kind of like the west more casual. Again, it depends on the restaurant. But she couldn't find lotion that didn't have whitening cream. Ah, whitening cream. Look how much I love the whitening cream. Mm. Uh. So that's what she said. And whitening cream, this is kind of popular, which is weird in Thailand because Thailand, compared to Eastern Asia, people are a little bit darker skin, usually. And, uh, but they do the same thing in Eastern Asia, in Korea. A lot of girls put this, um, this whitening cream on their face to look more white because it's considered to have a, um, sounds kind of racist. And anyways, it's like a, like a status. Like whiter people, the whiter you are, the higher status you have, kind of like that. So she says she had a, had problems finding white. Uh, lotion without whitening cream in it. So, um, yeah, you can, I didn't use lotion. Not because I'm white. Like they say, uh, remember uh, Bill Burr made a funny joke about that, about uh, white people not using uh, lotion. It's pretty funny. But um, actually, I use oil, and I've used oil for a long time. I use, these days, I use coconut oil. But I used to use olive oil, and I just put that on my skin. Because I don't really like lotion so much, it's got uh, so many, usually has so many chemicals in it and the natural stuff in it too. So basically your options are going to be limited. So if you have a favorite kind of lotion here, eh, chances are you probably won't be able to find it over there. Next one, L's and R's. Okay, it's a pronunciation thing. Uh, many Asians, uh, they mix up their L's and the R's. Okay, so for example, say my name is Ryan. Okay, some of your students, okay, some of your students, if your name is Ryan, some of your students might call you Lion. Okay, because they mix up the R's and the L's. Right? It's not, they have a different phonetic system in their languages. And this is across, she said this in Thailand, it's the same. China, Korea, Taiwan, it's all happen um, there as well so if you're teaching over there it's a good to do some tongue twisters you know 
with L's and R's and stuff. This is a good way to help uh, break their, uh, to make them uh, improve their pronunciation. Phone. She says that uh, she thought people are a little bit more addicted to electronics and phones. And um, I think I thought that too when I was there. Although, yeah, now here I'm in the States and I... People are still 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 addicted to the phones more or less here. They just might be a little bit more so there. Interesting. She says in Thailand people walk slower, and she says it's because of the heat. And um, I think it's also like a cultural thing, and the heat may have something to do to it, have to do with it. But um, I would say that that's not common. Most people, of course. People can walk at different paces, but the average pace, um, like in, in Asia, Eastern Asia, is going to be faster. People are going to walk faster. And uh, so an interesting book I read was, um, uh, was it, well, The Psychology of uh, Time, uh, Philip Zimbardo. Very interesting. Uh, he talks about, talks about um, like the influence of cultures, like certain cultures, like cultures like... Hispanic, Mexican culture, it's more slowed down, it's more in the moment culture. But a culture like the USA, or say Germany, or say Japan, this is more future oriented, you know, F future oriented, joint, uh, whatever. And um, it's more about uh, being on time, really thinking of the future, not enjoying the moment so less, just being more future oriented. Very interesting book, I highly recommend it. And so, um, yeah, I would say that Thailand is going to be more like, more like, uh, say, uh, Mexico or, you know, a Central American kind of vibe where it's more laid back. But then Eastern Asia is going to be more, and I'd say probably, um, yeah, the weather could have something to do with it. I'd just say the more the farther north you go, the more it's going to get like that. And then the more, and, and if you're in big cities, it's going to be like that too. So if you're in, it's more, same with your country, right? People are more rush, rush in uh, big cities, whereas in the countryside, it's a little bit more laid back. People are a little bit more taking it easy. Body size. She says ties have smaller body size. I think the average male was like, Five foot six or something, and then I think the average male. I just googled this online. Average male in uh, China was like five seven. Korea was like five nine, and Japan was like five eight or something maybe. And uh, that's interesting. Here in the states, I think it's five. Of course, in Asia, you'll see fewer obese people. Okay, not like the USA. USA, I read somewhere like uh, two thirds of people or overweight, something absurd like that, and then like a third of them are like obese. It's pretty sad. So you go over to Asia, people generally eat healthier and um, much healthier. And uh, even the school cafeterias, like you'd be surprised, the food the kids eat pretty healthy food. Um, although you're probably gonna you're start, I bet they have a growing obesity problem, but. Compared to the states, it's, it's pretty small. They're just getting influence from the states because there's still KFC and McDonald's and Burger King over there, you know. So we're having kind of a negative uh, influence on them in that. She mentions that they're honest about how you look, and I think this is true. It's kind of interesting because in Asia, I would say people are more modest in most regards um, more modest more well mannered than are say Americans generally speaking more polite um, however this can seem kind of not so polite sometimes people about your appearance and stuff people um, like she said people would tell you that uh, if you don't look good they would tell you you know or if you have a zit on your face they're gonna tell you you know which, um, in my experience in Eastern Asia, I would say that's true as well. Um, and um, I remember this 
I was teaching in a hagwon in Korea, and I was in the office one day, and this guy, this this office teacher or this uh, co-worker who sat next to me was just staring at me, and he said, "You've got a long face." I looked at him. He says, "You've got a long face." It's like uh, yeah. another thing too, you know. You're like I got kind of a big nose, and I remember a woman. Uh, asking me to touch it on the street, like just kind of a random woman and I bumped in and started a little small talk and she was like fascinated with my nose and then she asked me if I could, she could touch my nose, a little off topic, but plastic bags, she says they use a lot of plastic bags and that there's no uh, paper or plastic option, that's true, they use, uh, they do use a lot of plastic, especially um, in Thailand, or in Taiwan, um, yeah, it was too much. She, same thing, she missed the same thing. Like, you go to a tea, there's lots of tea shops in Taiwan. So, if you uh, go to get a tea in a store, like, um, this is a great thing about Taiwan, actually, the tea shops. I think I love them. And the juice drinks, it's great fruit juice there. Mm. It's really good. Same with Thailand. I don't actually know about the Remember the fruit juice, but you can get lots of great fresh fruits. Tropical place, right? So get good fresh fruit there. But anyways, when you go to the, the tea shop, you're going to get a, a cup, a plastic cup. And they're going to give you a plastic spoon. The top of the cup's going to be covered in plastic. And then you puncture that with a spoon. And then they're going to give you a plastic bag to put the cup in. And I think that it's like a little narrow kind of cup-shaped plastic bag. And you put that in there, and then you can carry carry your tea with you and it seems like uh, it seems a little excessive although it is a little practical in the sense that if you drive a scooter um, you can just put the plastic bag on the handlebars so you get your tea there on your handlebars and you're just driving like that so it's practical in that aspect but um, uh, they use too much um, plastic for sure when you go to a restaurant it just seems overload plastic like you get to go food, you're getting all kinds of plastic with, with your, uh, uh, it just seems like too much. And uh, no paper, yeah, no, I can't ever recall a single store anywhere having a paper option. And you see a lot of litter, like people, that's another topic, but definitely people are more, uh, there's careless people around here in San Francisco, but, um, you see people litter uh, a lot, just throw stuff in the street, um, especially in China. Topic, street dogs. Uh, she said there's a lot of dogs in Thailand. I don't really remember this. Um, I don't remember that, but she says they don't like to kill animals, and they um, just see them lying in the road. And they just they're pretty comfortable there, so a lot of like, um, this is I think not common. I, I kind of vaguely remember one street dog in my neighborhood in uh, Taichung, Taiwan, and um, but other than that, I remember street cats, but in China, Korea, Japan, not so sure if I was spending that much time there, but I doubt it. There's that many, anyways. Um, and in Korea, of course, they eat dogs, maybe that's the reason why. As they get their heads chopped off and eaten for dinner. Not quite, actually. Not many people eat uh, eat dogs in in Korea, according to my Korean friends. Um, they do, but it's becoming a little bit less common in some sense. But the younger de among the younger generation, there are restaurants out there. Uh, we're seeing one. Um, but it's not that common. Umbrellas. Uh, she mentions in Thailand, uh, you'll see um, women wearing umbrellas or people using umbrellas, not just because of the rain, for the sun. This is true in Asia. Uh, a lot of women will protect, uh, use umbrellas to stay out of the sun, and you'll see them, um, yeah, just walk around the summer with an umbrella. And even sometimes they can wear it can be so hot out, and they'll wear full, full-length pants. Um, like older women too, even like farmers, they'll cover their face. So there's no skin exposed. 
uh, some scooters. Scooters have like these little like um, I don't know what you'd call it, like the little sleeve thing. So it's attached to the handlebars of the scooter. So you put your hands in it. And you can drive, but they're protected from the sun. Uh, you'll see that in Taiwan sometimes, and uh, saw some pictures on the net of uh, that in Japan too. So people generally more uh, weary of the sun. Uh, try to stay out of the sun, unlike. Um, you know, people in the States or in Europe, Western countries tend to be more, yeah, let's get a tan. Yeah. Moving your shoes. Uh, it's common, okay, in Thailand, and it's common in Eastern Asia in general. I think it started with, it's a Japanese thing originally. Um, I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think so. Anyways, um, it's common, you go to someone's house, you take your shoes off. That's, that's a normal thing. And then, um, school, like my schools in Taiwan, uh, were, uh, depend. Actually, I remember some, some of the kindergartens, like you, you had to take your shoes off and you wore like slippers in Taiwan. Um, oh yeah, Korea too, the public school, uh, public school was the same that I taught in. But I think the Hogwans, if I remember correctly, yeah, Hogwans, you could just wear your shoes. So it kind of depends, like. I guess um, on, on, on the building or whatever, but usually in someone's house you'll take them off. You know, sometimes, like in Japan, there's some restaurants where you would take your shoes off too. Like some of these nice, um, I don't know, you sit down like basically on the floor and it's got a low table. Um, like that's common. So something to work out. I don't mind. I, I, that's what I do in my own house. So I was kind of raised like that a little bit. My parents weren't super strict about it, but they didn't. Um, most of the time, they wanted to expect us to take our shoes off. So and I think it just makes more sense. I use my floor for yoga and just lying on. So I want to keep it clean. I don't want shoes. And driving on the left side or the right side. This is in Thailand. People drive on the. Uh, I'm going to drive on the left and walk on the right, so it's like opposite in America. I usually drive on the right, walk on the right. Though in the countryside that's different if there's no sidewalk. But, um, so that's more like uh, in England, right? And then in Hong Kong, it's like that too. You drive on the left side. Uh, Japan, you drive on the left side. Korea, it's the right side. Taiwan and China. It's the right side. Um, that just reminds me of another thing. In Taiwan, like, there's a lot of scooters in Taiwan. Like, millions, literally millions of scooters in Taiwan. And there's, like, a population of 24 million or something. There are millions of scooters in Taiwan. And um, sometimes, it's like, sidewalks are just, like, non existent, you know? And so you gotta really be careful when you're out on the street uh, walking riding a bike. I remember one time getting hit by a scooter on my bicycle, so... Yeah, speaking about streets being crazy, um, she says, you know, sometimes in Thailand, like, people just drive wherever. I, I remember the streets being kind of crazy there. I was there, too. And that was after I was living in Taiwan, where, um, I think, yeah, Taiwan was pretty crazy I mean, compared to the States, definitely. There's just uh, so many scooters, and it's just like different rules, like the, the people don't, they're not so strict about the rules, although if you're in like Taipei, people follow the rules a little bit more, but when you get out of Taipei, it's more like, um, it's more just kind of freewheeling, you know. So, and um, that's kind of similar to what she said about Thailand. I remember like Bangkok, some streets just, just packed cars, scooters or motorbikes. Scooters are a little bit different than the ones in Taiwan, but um, pretty crazy. So you got to be careful out there. I remember definitely some people, some um, I've, I've known, there's a guy who I took over his job, actually got in a wicked bad uh, scooter accident. And his leg got all messed up and he was out, he couldn't teach or nothing for him anything for like six months. So you gotta be careful and I knew a, a girl, she was like drunk on her scooter and got hit by a bus and died in Taiwan. She was a foreigner. So you gotta be careful and they are dangerous. 
And yeah, so the rules are pretty root loose. Uh, tardiness. This kind of goes along with something we talked about that future and present minded thing before. Like she says, it's common in Thailand for people to be five or ten minutes late. So that's also like, you know, more Hispanic Latino culture is more laid back, more present in the moment orientated, and uh, they tend to be late. It's just more like uh, fashionably late, it's just more the culture. Whereas, you know, in USA or Japan, Korea, Eastern Asia, Germany, um, it's more like you know, you're on time, if anything, you're early, you come early, you know? So people are more uh, precise, you know, like trains in Japan, very precise and on time. Uh, she says in Thailand there are two seasons, uh, hot and hotter. Um, pretty hot, get pretty hot, you can get pretty hot in Thailand, I definitely remember that. And I was there in January when I was there. So, um, pretty hot. Same with Thailand, uh, Taiwan. Taiwan's pretty hot, um, especially in the very south. Um, I remember in Taichung, like, basically the coldest it got in the winter in Taichung was about 11 degrees. I remember seeing the uh, thermometer. And um, it's cold when you're driving a scooter, too, in that weather. And then uh, summer, but it's sometimes the weather can be in the south of the island, it's warmer. Like I went down to Kenting once in February and went swimming in the ocean. Yeah, and, uh, it, was, uh, it was not bad. It was pretty good, actually. So in Kenting, it's, uh, it's uh, pretty, pretty uh, it's warmer down there in the south. And uh, it's just hot and humid, I say, in general, in most places. I guess Asia is big, but... In Eastern Asia, most of uh, you know Central, South, East China, Korea, Japan, Taiwan, it's all going to be pretty humid weather, like hot and humid in the summer, anyways. Of course, the winter. I mean, depending where you are, the farther north you go. Um, like I lived in Busan, Korea. I saw snowflakes fly two times. It never stuck on the ground. But, um, so it was cold. I'm not sure what the lowest temperature were. It was cold enough to snow. Uh, and then outside of uh, Busan, I lived in Changwon, and that was like, uh, that was, that was, uh, I remember I saw like four inches of snow on the ground once. It was a little bit colder there, and the snow stuck. So, um, yeah, it's going to depend. But in Taiwan, you won't see snow unless you're way up in like uh, the mountains, like Ali Shan, it will snow up there. But that's like 11,000 feet or something. So, as people tend to work long hours, uh, that's generally true. I'd say, like she gives for uh, as an example of uh, taxi cab drivers or uh, motor cab drivers. It's kind of like three wheeled motorcycle bikes with like a back, and a couple seats in the back. It's pretty cool. And um, said that they'll work like 20 hours a day, but they'll take like naps and kind of take it easy and stuff. I'd say Taiwan is kind of similar to that, my experience. People tend to work a lot more, it seems like. Working Saturday is kind of normal. Um, people like to say Eastern Asia like tend to work more longer hours, harder. It's not like. So laid back in that aspect. The women can wear uh, high heels all day in Thailand. And this reminded me of uh, Korea actually. In Korea, the women can really dress up. Really, you know, also wear high heels and then mini skirts. Very common. And uh, middle of the winter, when it's pretty cold, they'll still be wearing mini skirts. And uh, I don't mind. But I, I thought if I was if I was a woman, I probably would have wanted to uh, probably uh, want to wear a mini skirt in the middle of the winter. Uh, so appearances are important, and people do tend to judge you more on your appearance. So if you're dressed sloppy or something, people will kind of judge you for it. This one, she says, uh, oil. They use a lot of oil when they cook. 
I'd say in my experience in China, Korea, and Taiwan, yeah, that's tends to be true, but it depends what you get, I guess. Um, man, this is a long video. So, yeah, it depends on what you get. And uh, oil is... Uh, uh, So you can learn how to say, learn how to say some things like uh, without, without oil or less oil or no MSG, MSG is common. China and Taiwan. So uh, that's it. Try to end with the loop.